Hello everyone and welcome. Nanaka Tokiwa is easily a character with one of the highest potentials for greatness among all characters in Magia record. She has some of the most interesting and unique reactions to being presented with conflict and her choices are often those that villains would take to achieve their goals. As usual, I will first quickly summarize some important parts of her magical girl story before diving deeper into the analysis behind what makes Nanaka such an extraordinary character. Her MSS begins in Nanaka's home, where Nanaka has gathered her newest allies, Akira, Meiyui and Kako. Nanaka declares that all of them have been suffering from attacks of witches, but not just any witch, they were apparently all dealing with the same witch. Meiyui distrusts Nanaka immediately and to gain that trust, Nanaka then tells of her backstory. Nanaka is part of a family school of flower arrangement and when her father fell deathly ill and the leadership of the school passed to someone who didn't honor tradition and besmirched the good name of the school. Nanaka then met Kyubei who told her of the power of witches and what was going on, after which Nanaka wished specifically for the ability to know who caused the ruin of her family. Even before having become a magical girl, Nanaka was therefore already smart enough to understand that it was possible for different parties to have been at fault for what happened to her family and therefore simply wishing for revenge on a single person or a single witch would not have solved anything and Nanaka therefore wished specifically for the power to go after her enemies herself. She also reveals that this has granted her the ability to tell at a glance if anyone she's looking at is either a friend or a foe towards reaching her goals, giving her the mystic eyes of enemy perception. At this point Nanaka then explains that her enemy in this case was a specific witch that she wants to hunt down and that her search for this witch has caused her to cross path with the rest of her team who have also been dealing with this exact same witch. According to Nanaka, this witch is similar to a locust, which is why she then calls it the Locust Witch, and in order to defeat this witch, she wants to form an alliance with the other three. Mayo still distrusts Nanaka and tells her that she's not going to be ordered around by her, to which Nanaka actually agrees. It does become obvious later on that Nanaka does not need to be officially known as the leader of the team for her to get the other three to follow along with exactly what she wants. She frames her team as an alliance of people looking to fulfill a common goal and that everyone should simply help each other out for mutual benefit and share information. But we know very well that this is all just a simple act of framing things differently. Nanaka is still very much in essence the leader and can make any of them do whatever she wants. Soon afterwards, the team, which I will henceforth call the Nanaka Mafia, find the witch in question and destroy her. Uh, but Nanaka hints that this was not actually the true Locust Witch, but simply one of its familiars that grew into a witch of its own. Afterwards, Nanaka has a conversation with Kyubei and talks about her past experiences. One day, when she was going after familiar, she found a lonely soul gem and noticed a nearby dead body, the body of Akira. Bringing the soul gem closer, Akira came back to life and Nanaka realized the truth about the soul gems. Surprisingly enough though, Nanaka did not seem angry or distressed about this. She accepted it as part of her bargain of having become a magical girl. She also mentioned that she has not told the other three about this, since she is still evaluating their worth. As Kyubei walks away, Nanaka mentions that she is looking forward to a true revenge and even hints that she is well aware that the true enemy of magical girls is Kyubei himself. That is the end of her Magical Girl story, but Nanaka also appears in the Magical Girl stories of every single one of her teammates as a core instigator. So just as a quick recap for those, in Akira's MSS she comes across an Akira soul gem as Akira dropped dead, a scene that Nanaka also described during her MSS that I talked about earlier. And in Kako's MSS, Nanaka intentionally manipulates Kako into contracting by making Kako believe that Nanaka was losing against the witch and that Kako needed to contract to save her. And in Meiyue's MSS, Nanaka orchestrated a chain of events by using Kaku and Akira as helpers to get close to Meiyue to get her to become an ally. Nanaka is also a core player in other event stories, and to very quickly recap here as well. In the Azalea event, Nanaka was the source of conflict for the Aka Azaleas in Kamehama by presenting herself as a force that distrusted the Azaleas and could potentially spell their doom. In the Susune Magika event, Nanaka was the main antagonist to Susune, doing everything she can to counteract Susune's movements and ultimately executed a plan that was able to utterly defeat Susune and made her flee the city without having to rely on any sort of violence or battle. 
Looking at all these stories, it becomes very clear that Nanaka is an extremely unique character compared to almost every other character in Marga Record. She shows herself as being emotionally rather cold, yet always speaking friendly words, aimed to make the other person feel as comfortable as possible and make them trust her. She's also calculating and always thinks about the best possible way to use all the resources at her disposal to accomplish her goals. And she does view other people as part of her resources. So manipulating both enemies and friends into ultimately achieving her goals is a core principle to the way she operates. It also becomes clear at this point that Nanaka exhibits all the character traits that you would expect from a villain. A well-written villain at that even. Yet Nanaka is someone that we see as a good person. She builds friendships with other people, hunts witches with them, she protected all of Kamehama by risking everything to fight Susune, and we know that she is ready to fight the final enemy, Kyubei. Yet we also can't overlook that in order to do all of that, she's using the tools of a villain. For example, when she recruited Kako, she manipulated her into becoming a magical girl. Something that is rather divisive and controversial. She got into a fight with a witch in front of Kako and put herself into a spot where she was about to lose to the witch, forcing Kako to intervene by becoming a magical girl herself. This is quite the controversial course of action for Nanaka to take and there is a lot that could be discussed here, uh, but this video is not meant uh, for like a discussion on morals and ethics, since this is something that I will keep for when I talk directly to people one-on-one -on -one and not into a camera or from the off. I will say though that people often mention that it is hinted that Nanaka was not acting and was indeed struggling against the witch, but if she was acting or not doesn't really matter because it still doesn't change the fact that she put herself into the situation on purpose to force Kako into becoming a magical girl. The main, the main reason then why Nanaka is such an interesting character and why she has so much potential lies mostly in the way Nanaka chooses to interact with conflict that presents itself. Nanaka uses the tools of a villain to do good. She manipulates and toys with people not out of malice or because she doesn't trust people, but because this is simply Nanaka's way of interacting with people and her way of achieving her goals. Nanaka's worldview is completely different than that of other characters. For example, in her girlfriend Hazuki's Magical Girl story, Nanaka mentions that Hazuki is similarly manipulating and playing people in order to achieve her goals, yet Hazuki has absolutely no idea what she means and is not quite sure what Nanaka is trying to get at. Hazuki does not actively try to manipulate people. I would just say that, I would just call it that what Hazuki is doing is having good people skills and knowing how to lead a conversation in such a way that people end up satisfied and you reach a reasonable conclusion. Yet Nanaka cannot help herself but apply her own view of how human interactions are supposed to be led and is unable to understand this fact, which is all also another reason why Hazuki and Nanaka are like totally great ship. <laughs> wink wink. Speaking from personal experience though, it is very much exhausting to see so many different characters always make similar choices to how they want to achieve their goals, but the immediate willingness of Nanaka to instantly manipulate and become a schemer, playing out other people against each other while still striving for noble goals, that is what makes Nanaka so refreshing. That said, it is rather sad that Nanaka does not have any role to play in the main story, does not receive any character development anywhere else in any story she's in, nor does her past personal story ever get continued anywhere in any meaningful way. Even her Mitama training story that is currently running by the time of this video upload is basically just a recap of her character and does not add anything new to the mix. And her absence from main story could also be rationalized as Nanaka simply being so smart and pragmatic in her approach that it would just be too easy for her to solve all the problems present in the main story in such a short amount of time and the writers just are not able to write around this. They needed to find a reason similar to how Homura is so incredibly heavily nerfed in Mario record so they basically just didn't let her into the main story until she got like a cameo where she didn't do anything.
Nanaka really is an extraordinary character that could find great use in many divisive situations and has an extreme potential to even become an antagonist. At the same time, she could also be the forefront of Kamehama's crusade against Kyubei if they ever decide to actually go that way. In order to actually fully flesh out her character while using her traits to further develop her and create these controversial stories that could result from her characters, that would take an absolutely fantastic writer. And I am also sad to say at this point that the writers of my records simply are not of that caliber. The only exception is Doro Inu from Inukuri, but I don't think he has any interest whatsoever in writing a Nanaka focused event. And her, as I said, her aforementioned Mitama training story is quite the testament that F4 Samurai writers simply are not up to the task, so we will probably never see a potential actually be lived out. There is a fine balance to walk to create a character that, while striving to do good, applies not a standard and a simple mindset, but a more complex mindset that borders on a disorder without writing a character that actually has a disorder, while putting the moral and ethical implications of their actions into the focus and asking two important questions that A, how wrong is it to use actions meant to manipulate the personal freedoms of others for your own goals, if those goals are also the goals of the person you're manip manipulating, and B, is it even wrong at all if you're causing no harm to the person you're trying to manipulate, since after all you could say that all human interactions are kind of a form of manipulation. I do hope we see a writer taking Nanaka further into the depths of what is possible to be achieved with her character, even if that writer is not an official writer for the game. And before I end this video, I will leave you with quite an important final question that I myself could not find a good answer to just yet. If Nanaka used her innate magic and looked at a member of Magius, would her magic tell her that they are a friend or a foe to her goals? On one hand, since Magius' ultimate goal is to get rid of all witches and Kyubei, they could be shown to her as an ally. But on the other hand, Magius' dealings would kill a large number of people including her closest allies and even the students of the school that she's trying to reclaim all this time, therefore showing Magius as foes. So are Magius friend or foe to her goals? I will await your answer in the comments below. Until then, thank you all for watching, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and I'll see you guys next time. Also her glasses are pretty damn cool.